नमस्कार सोसाइटी मायर बाड़ी टुडे एज वी नो दैट आवर टॉपिक इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक एंड इट इज द कलमिनेटिंग पॉइंट ऑफ वेदांत विच इज नोन एज अद्वैत वेदांत सो i find many of you are already here present uh before my opening the session so i welcome you all yuri from usa mr dulal chakravarti from borpeta and all other friends and uh followers of the international vedanta society devotees of international vedanta society mainly from singapore bagus from Indonesia Chika from Indonesia Kalpana ji from Patna so here we have a mini world you know India and the whole of the world and uh, Laura from UK welcome Laura so today we have the topic Advaita Vedanta so we know and we are also being joined by many young friends of my of ours uh, Shubha Shaw from Kolkata welcome Shubha so this topic advaita vedanta is the very topic of the international vedanta society we know and as we have been discussing in our last few sessions that it is with this motto of uh, spreading the message of vedanta of the roots from door to door that bhagwan the founder uh, and core of the international vedanta society he established the international vedanta society back in the year 1984 19th of november uh, sorry 1989 19th of november in the year 1984 he had his realization the nirvikalpa samadhi where you have the realization of the ultimate welcome devashish ji from bengaluru so normally when we say this word vedanta when we utter this word what comes to our mind is uh, normally the advaita vedanta the non dualistic part of vedanta comes to our mind i welcome sri vishwanath singh ji from kolkata so but we must also know that uh, by the word vedanta is not only meant advaita vedanta the advaita vedanta is the culminating point is the ultimate of vedanta but in vedanta we have also other two parts the first one being the dvaita or the dualistic vedanta and then second the qualified non dualism or what we know as what we know as vishishta advaita and then the culminating point which we know as advaita vedanta the non dual vedanta or the monoism so just in a nutshell i would like to uh, welcome suchitra another young lady from kolkata i welcome you all so as uh, we uh, sharbani welcome from guwahati uh, another young lady from guwahati mr badal bakshi welcome so now i will be going into um, uh, the depths of vedanta so i cannot welcome you all personally pashupati ji you are welcome so let us in a nutshell first understand what is vedanta what is vedanta and what is uh, dualistic vedanta what is qualified non dualism and then the ultimate the advaita vedanta the first two of course i will be discussing in just a nutshell because today's topic is advaita vedanta the non dualistic part of vedanta also known as the monoism so vedanta we know vedanta is the culminating or the essence of the vedas which are also known as the upanishads so upanishads and vedanta are synonymous and they contain the highest philosophical essence of the vedas now the dualism when the we begin with the dualistic part of vedanta which is known as the dvaita in sanskrit or in hindi which we say as dvaita vedanta there the aspirant is the devotee he is known as the devotee and he has his deity or his ideal 
whom he worships and he regards his ideal as the supreme as the master and he considers himself as the servant of the supreme of his master and he has the tendency of serving the master as a servant serves the master so and there he is eternally the devotee is eternally separate from the ultimate the supreme god so god and the devotee they are entirely to separate identities and they never become one and the tendency of the devotee is to serve god when we come to the qualified non dualism the vishishta dvaita vad then what happens it is not that the aspirant is totally different from the ideal or god he does not consider himself totally separate from god and also he does not consider himself totally identical with god what he considers is that i am a part of the supreme i am a part of the supreme and the there is a very beautiful uh, example by which it has been defined it is like the spark and the fire the fire and the spark of the fire the spark of the fire is not the fire itself but again it is not separate from the fire entirely so it is the part of the fire the qualities of the fire are in it but not the whole so that is known as qualified non dualism or vishishta advaita vad and when we come to the ultimate the essence of vedanta that is known as advaita vedanta advaita vad or non dual vedanta where the aspirant identifies himself one with the supreme and hence it is at times seen as or considered as very tough because it is really easy to consider myself as an uh, uh, um, uh, devotee serving god you know or a part of the supreme but to become the supreme to be one with it having no difference whatsoever it requires courage because i verily become the supreme brahman or atman or god so this is known as the non dual vedanta or advaita vedanta what does it say that i am verily the brahman aham brahmasmi i am verily the brahman i am verily the atma i am one with it there is no difference whatsoever with atman or brahman or god or the supreme whatever we may call it there is no difference whatsoever this is known as advaita vedanta or non dual vedanta so we know that swami vivekananda has spoken about advaita vedanta at length and he in fact brought this vedanta of the uds to the mass to a great extent and that is why we have come to know about vedanta in this way so i would like to Uh, quote swami vivekananda here what he says about advaita vedanta he says that advaitaism is the fairest flower of philosophy it is the fairest flower of philosophy and religion that any country in any age has produced where human thought attains its highest expression and even goes beyond the mystery which seems to be impenetrable 
because to consider myself as a part of the supreme or to consider myself as serving the supreme serving god is fine it's okay but considering myself one with the supreme that there is no other god than myself there is no other supreme than myself i am verily that brahman it is at times quite impenetrable but vedanta that is why this is the path of the courageous of the bold and courageous where you need that courage to go beyond all your limits to break away all your boundaries to break away all the limitations and to go to a point to go to a state where you realize yourself one with the supreme self one with the supreme consciousness that is why this is the path of the bold and courageous and what does advaita vedanta say advaita vedanta say that if there is a god if there is a god whatever we may say supreme or whatever if there is a god then the god must be the creator and the created we normally know you know as just a conventional idea that god has created this universe but vedanta says if god has created this universe then god is not only the creator he is also the creation himself he is the creation himself here we come to know about two things the one is the efficient cause and another is the material cause now uh, it has been described in vedanta in uh, advaita vedanta in a very nice way that when a potter one who makes pot and glasses of earth you know earthen lamp or earthen glass or earthen pitcher so the potter who makes the pot he is known as the efficient cause one who creates so he is the efficient cause and the product that he creates is the effect it is the effect the end so that is the effect he is the efficient cause the creator and the thing that he makes the product is the effect and the material by which he makes those lamps or glass or pitcher is known as the material cause so the efficient cause is the potter himself the material cause that is the earth or mud by which he is making those products and the effect so vedanta advaita vedanta what does advaita vedanta declare advaita vedanta declares that if there is a god then god is not only the creator he is not only the efficient cause but he is also the material cause that means this whole universe that we see is none other than god himself this is what advaita vedanta says that whatever we see whatever we see is verily brahman or god what we have what we find in the upanishads beautifully said sarvam khalvidam brahma whatever we see whatever we have whatever we feel whatever is there in this entire universe is verily brahman that is advaita vedanta and it says that everything whatever we see this wall this lights this pillars this hall everything whatever is there is brahman only the difference that we see is because of the name and form everything to exist in order to exist there are five components five things which are necessary which constitutes the thing what is it sat chit ananda naam and rupa in vedanta it is said asti bhati priya naam and roop asti bhati priya naam and roop these five thing constitutes whatever there is what we see 
वॉट इज अस्थि अस्थि इज एग्जिस्टेंस भाति इज नॉलेज कॉन्शियसनेस प्रिय इज आनंद ब्लीस सो अस्थि भाति प्रिय दैट इज एग्जिस्टेंस नॉलेज एंड ब्लीस सो सत चित आनंद दैट विच इज द नेचर ऑफ ब्रह्म सो दैट इज द बेसिक the fundamental of whatever is there sat chit ananda or asti bhati and priya and the two rest to a naam naam means the name and rupa the form so whatever we see in this entire universe whatever we have each and every particle is actually asti bhati priya is satchit ananda is of the nature of brahman or atman or god minus the name and form it is due to the name and form that you see me as this having this shape and you see this flower pot and the flowers as they are there is no difference whatsoever the only difference is the name and form i have a particular form i look like a man a human being but i am not actually a human being it looks like a flower it is not a flower because the name and form creates the difference this is what creates the manifoldness and advaita vedanta says that manifoldness whatever we see is just mere hypnotism we have hypnotized ourselves and created this universe with our own mind i have hypnotized myself in reality there is no difference between you and me there is no difference between me and this flowers there is no difference the only difference is because of the name and form so when we give up the name and form i have an existence i have a knowledge and then bliss it also has the same thing only the difference that we see or we feel is because of the name and form it has got a form i have got a form so this difference in the form creates the difference but if we give up the differences if we give up the name and form then we are verily the same we are actually as said by swami pavitrananda ji very beautifully the master of bhagwan he says swami pavitrananda says that in our real nature we are all one and indivisible we have one existence one identity it is not two whenever we see two we are hypnotizing ourselves we are hypnotizing ourselves so vedanta says that come out of this hypnotism come out of this hypnotism break this delusion break this hypnotism and come out know the reality know that whatever you see whatever is there is actually brahman and nothing else and that is what vedanta proclaims sarvam khalvidam brahma that everything is brahman aham brahmasmi i am verily that brahman and whatever is there is only brahman and as we have in the first essence of the international vedanta society which bhagwan himself realized and then he laid down the foundation in five different points giving the five different points that there is nothing second but god atman or brahman there is no second existence whatsoever so vedanta proclaims this single one single existence then what is this world that we see it is like a dream in the dream we dream so many things there are hundreds of existence in our dream isn't it we see the mountain the lakes the ocean the jungle these my friends there are hundreds of different existences in our dream but that is all in reality a single existence which is me i have created my dream similarly this 
world that we see as said by Swami Pavitrananda is a long and protracted illness. It's an illness. It is not the normal thing. It is the delusion that our mind has created. Vedanta says to come out of this delusion and to know the reality, to find that oneness and until and unless we go to that oneness, we find that oneness, we realize that oneness, Vedanta says you cannot stop. Advaita Vedanta, non-dual Vedanta says that you cannot stop until and unless you find that oneness, you discover that oneness, you realize that oneness within yourself. You don't have to realize it or you cannot realize it outside yourself. You have to realize it within yourself, within you. This is what Vedanta says. That discover that oneness within you and until and unless you reach that oneness, you cannot stop as said in the Kathopanishad very beautifully, Uttishthata Jagrata Prapya Varan Nibodhata Arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. So to whom shall one say arise? Who is sleeping? Awake. That means I am not awakened. When we dream, we dream and then we wake up. And when we wake up, the different existences that we had, that I saw in the dream, they just vanish. They just vanish like this. Similarly, that is the awakening of this world, the worldly awakening. When I wake up from my dream, all the different existence, all the manifoldness that was there in the dream, the mountain, the oceans, the lion, the tiger, my friends and these and that, they all vanish in just one moment. Similarly, we need another awakening for which the Saints, the self-realized persons, the rishis and munis have proclaimed Uttishthata Jagrata, arise awake. You need another awakening. You have woken up from this world, this worldly awakening, but you need another awakening and that awakening is known as the transcendental awakening when we wake up when we have this transcendental awakening, then in the same process, in the, in the fraction of a moment when we realize the self, we will see that this, all these differences, all this manifoldness, all this phenomenon, they have just vanished like this. But for that, we need another awakening. And that awakening is known as the transcendental awakening. And that is our goal. And that is why it has been said, arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. What is the goal? The goal is oneness. What type of oneness? It is not mixing up of two things. No. It is not that there are two things and we bring them together and we fuse them. There is a fusion. No. It's not that kind of physical fusion. It's my realization where I realize that actually in reality there are no two existences there are no two identities it is only one eternal pure and ever free the absolute identity whom we call as Atman or Brahman and that is verily me I am verily that Brahman Aham Brahmasmi. This oneness which comes in my realization, which I realize through Samadhi, where there is no impediment whatsoever between me and the Supreme, through that Samadhi, I come to realize that oneness, and hence it is not the oneness of the external world bringing two things and mixing up. It's not a mixture, it's one eternal thing because you cannot mix because you can only mix when there are two when there is only one how can you mix so it speaks of that ultimate unity the oneness and until and unless i reach that goal 
stop not i cannot stop even with the faintest of difference between me and the supreme is not accepted in advaita vedanta not a bit there is no space for any difference and this is the beauty of advaita vedanta this is the beauty of the upanishads they say that until and unless you reach that oneness until and unless you realize that oneness that you are one with that supreme until and unless you know this you cannot stop you have to come again and again you have to take birth again and again until and unless you realize that you are one with the supreme so the goal of advaita vedanta is oneness the goal of advaita vedanta is not to worship someone as a creator the goal of advaita vedanta is to see the creator as one with me that i am the creator and i am verily the creation it is me actually reflected in many as many as different things as different beings as different particles it is me getting reflected it is my self it is the real self it is my real nature the self the ultimate self which is reflected in different beings it is you know the different beings are like reflectors they reflect the same thing like the sun the sun which is real it is shining brightly when it falls on a clear water we can see the dazzling sun the bright sun but if it falls on a dark water a very you know on a sun but it would be very dark and dull similarly it is in the saint in the common mass in each and every person of the universe in each and every being of the universe in each and every particle of the universe as one with the universe it is me and me only and no second existence whatsoever so it is ever eternal pure birthless sexless deathless immortal it is neither a man nor a woman neither it is something separate from that it is existence where there is only existence you cannot say it that whether it is masculine or feminine whether it is a girl or a boy you cannot because it is pure existence not existing as swami shankarananda swami shankarananda has been imposed upon that eternal existence this body this frame and this name when i take out that name and form that what remains is pure eternal existence which is myself and vedanta says that we have to know this self there is but one existence the infinite the ever blessed one and it is this actually infinite existence which is in terms of dual dualism when we speak in term of dualism that it tries to manifest itself in different ways the expressions the worm that we see crawling on the earth it is the same divine existence the same existence trying to manifest in that way and in the saint who is quiet and calm in his meditation immersed in meditation it is the same existence manifested in the most perfect way so there are not two existences it is not that that worm crawling on the earth is separate from me i am one with that because in our real nature we are one
and indivisible. Not only one, we are indivisible. The divisions that we see are mere self-hypnotism. We have hypnotized ourselves. This self, this supreme self is to be realized. We know we have in our earlier sessions we have spoken about, we have discussed at length about the process of realizing this that you have to ask, hear about it. Atma bahare drashtabhya srotabhya mantabhya niridhasitabhya. That means this Atman is first to be heard of and then reflected upon and then meditated upon and then realized in the depths of samadhi. It has to be realized. And how is the realization? Not something as different from me as one and indivisible from me. I am verily that Brahman. So this is the way, this is the process of realizing. But actually we have to realize, we cannot know him. We become. Why? Because Vedanta says that the Atman is the knower of everything. It is the knower. It is the absolute knower. So that which is the knower cannot be known. How can you know the knower? The knower can never be known. It does not become known. It is the knower. And that is why it has been beautifully, you know, the this different aspects of the same truth have been beautifully realized the truth, realized the absolute by becoming the absolute. We cannot know it. So, I cannot know Atman. So, can it not be known? It can be known. But not in the way we know something in the material world. Like if I want to know something, then there are two things. Me, the knower and the subject or the thing which I have to know, the known. So the knower and the known. In that way, Atman can never be known. Brahman can never be known. So in what way can Atman be known? You have to become one with it to know it. In that sense, you can know it that means we can realize it by becoming it, but it does never become the subject of knowing. It never becomes the known. And that is why it has been beautifully said that the knower can never be known. How can you know the knower? It is impossible. So can it not be known? Yes. You become. You become one with it and then you know it then you realize it becoming one with it and that is why the Upanishads say that Nayamatma pravachenena labhya na medhaya na bahuda srutena what does it mean? Na ayam atma. This atman cannot be known by pravachanena, by hearing, giving pravachans, discourses. It can never be known. Na medhaya. Medha means intellect. Not by intellect. Na bahuda srutena. Nor by hearing about it again and again. But see, the beauty, it has been said that you have to hear about the Atman again and again, but again it has been said that it cannot be known in that way because as long as I try to comprehend Atman or understand Atman or know Atman as something different from me, it becomes the subject of known. I become the knower and it becomes the known. So in that way it can never be known. However hard you may try, you may try your very best but still you can never know it as something different from yourself so nayamatma pravachanena labhya na medhaya na bahuda then how can we know it 
यमे वैश्य वृणुते ते न लभ्य हुम द आत्मन एक्सेप्ट एम्ब्रेसिस ही और शी कैन नो द आत्मन Now, will will whom will the Atman embrace, or is does Atman has a physical form that it will embrace? No. That means, first thing is that Atman will accept only them who are ready to know it, who are longing to know the absolute. Who are dying to know the absolute, the truth? Him will the Atman accept. So I have to try to know it, because else Atman will not accept. It will not embrace me. This has been said in order to make us understand that. even if i try my best i cannot know the atman unless and until it offers itself me if offers itself unto me that i am ready to accept you so it does never become known it is always the knower so i know him in the sense that i become one with it i become one with atman this is how we know atman and in what sense by being inseparable feeling myself or realizing myself one with it without any difference whatsoever not a bit the upanishads have time and again stressed upon it that until and unless you the till the moment you have even if faintest of difference between you and atman you have not reached the goal and that is why it is said arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached so our goal is to discover ourselves to realize atman and to know that i am one with this entire universe and actually if there is any god in this universe it is me and it is the material cause it is the efficient cause it is one with this universe the universe is nothing but brahman or atman or god himself i I have been seeing some questions, so I will just request you that uh, at the end uh, I will be trying to give you answers. Uh, maybe after five or seven minutes at the end of the session, so that I can keep on this session. So it says that, and when we realize this Atman, or when we realize ourselves, what do we see? That I am omnipresent. I am present everywhere. where shall i go this going and coming life and death they are mere hypnotism who dies how can the atman which is eternal birthless and deathless ever die what dies is this form is this frame what dies is this frame what will be burned to ashes will be this frame not the atman you cannot burn the atman you cannot cremate the atman you cannot touch it it is intangible it is present everywhere so when i realize myself one with brahman or atman i see that i am omnipresent i am present everywhere there is not a single a single space in this entire universe where i am not present 
Acharya Shankar, Adi Shankar Acharya beautifully says in his Nirvan Shatakam that Aham Nirvikalpo Nirakara Rupo Vibhutvacha Sarvatra Sarvendriyana that I am all pervading I am the omnipresent so this my coming and going my life and death these are all foolish talks one who has realized the self in this way as identifying himself one with Atman knows that there is no place in this universe where I can go because I can only go to a place where I am not present. I am present everywhere. I am omnipresent. I am all pervading. I am already present everywhere. And that means that I am infinite. That means that I am infinite. So we have to realize this infinite, eternal, divine, pure nature of ours. And it is only when we realize it that we transcend the barriers of death. We transcend all barriers of limitations. We transcend all barriers of caste, creed, sex, religion, nations, everything, whatever is there which divides us, whatever is there which differentiates us, whatever is there with, with this manifoldness, we break away all the limitations and we become one with this entire universe. We have to realize this ever eternal pure existence of ours. We have to realize this. And then we will see that this birth and death, which is, a, you know, this is the most dreadful thing that we uh, always think or which we fear, that is death. For me or for my dear ones, my near ones, whom I know as my dear and near, death is the most dreadful thing that I always try to evade and avoid. But when I will realize this, I will see for Atman there is no death. It is never born, it never dies. I will end today's session with a story and then I will be taking up your questions. It's a very beautiful story and a very, a story having a very, very deep meaning. That once there was a farmer and every day he used to go out to his farms and plow the field and his lands and come back in the evening and it was his daily routine, a normal routine he was going on. So one day in the morning he went out with his bullocks uh, to the field and he was plowing the field when all of a sudden a neighbor of his came running and he said, you come quickly, just run, leave everything and just run with me. He just left everything and he came with him with his neighbor and when he reached his house he saw that there were so many people there was a crowd big crowd in front of his house and then he could hear cries and screams and everything so when he went in weeping bitterly because his only son has died and we can just imagine the sorrow of a mother, the state of the mother whose only son has died. So she was crying bitterly, weeping bitterly. And the farmer just was quiet looking at all the things. And everyone were, you know, they were astonished that this farmer has no feeling. His only son has died and he is not even speaking a word or there is not even a drop of tear in his eyes. 
Seeing this, his wife started screaming, that, how are you? You don't have any emotions, you don't have any love for your son, your only son has died and you are not speaking any word, you don't have any anything to say and not even a tear in your eyes. Is this what you feel? You were his father, he was your only child. Then the farmer who was still now very quiet and calm and did not utter a word said that see, last night I had a dream and in that dream I saw that I am a king. I am a king having a big kingdom and I have seven princes. I had seven sons and they were the princes. When I woke up in the morning, everything was gone. There was no kingdom, no king, no princess and they were so beautiful, the princess, my sons, my seven sons, they were so beautiful, so handsome to look. But when I woke up in the morning, everything was gone. No kingdom, no king, no princess. And now I am thinking, for whom shall I weep? For my only son or for those seven sons whom I lost? It's a very significant story. That I have lost my son here, but I have also lost seven sons there in my dream. They were true to me when I was dreaming. It was not a dream to me. It was very true. And when I woke up, that means they died. Now for whom shall I weep? For my single son who has died? Or for those seven sons? That means this, what I am seeing, is just like the dream which I had. When I woke up, my sons died. Similarly, when I will wake up from this dream, as said by Swami Pavitrananda Ji, that this, what we are seeing, is a long and protracted illness. It is merely a self-hypnotism and nothing else. Whatever we see, whatever difference we see, are but self-hypnotism. Swami Vivekananda, when he was speaking about Vedanta in the West, and he was telling that, you know, this uh, self has to be constantly meditated upon, reflected upon. Then he was asked by a youngster that, Swamiji, you are telling that it has to be heard upon again and again. You have to meditate upon it again and again. So are you hypnotizing us? Then Swamiji said, no, my friend. I am not hypnotizing you because you are already hypnotized. I am trying to dehypnotize you. So whatever we see, the earth, the heavens, the hell, the good, the bad, anything and everything which has difference, which have contradictions, are but our hypnotisms. We have hypnotized ourselves. And Vedanta says that come out of this dream, long and dreary dream, come out of this long and protracted illness, break all the barriers, break all the dreams and limitations and come out of this long dream and realize the truth, arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. Till you know yourself, till you realize yourself that you are verily the Brahman which is one and indivisible, which is of the nature of pure, eternal, divine, deathless and birthless. Don't stop. Realize that Brahman or Atman as one with yourself and be free. Know that since the very beginning you were free, you are free and you will be free for eternity. The bondages, the differences, the manifoldness that you have been seeing are but your own creations as it were that you were hypnotizing yourself. Break this hypnotism, come out and realize the self as your own.
become one with it. Realize yourself and say, Aham Brahmasmi, I am verily that Brahma. This is what Advaita Vedanta proclaims that I am the ever pure, divine, eternal, sexless, changeless, intangible, immutable, birthless, deathless. Brahman or Atman. I am verily that Brahman. With this, I come to the end of this session. I will be now taking questions from you. If you have, I think a few of you have asked questions. Mm. Mr. Vidya Hajra has asked that guidance is more effective. Please, please guide me. See, uh, Mr. Hajra, we have been talking about Advaita Vedanta and Advaita Vedanta says, bless yourself. We have discussed this very thing in one of the sessions that Bhagwan once was said uh, by a devotee who came to see Bhagwan. that which we all generally say, you know, going to a self-realized person that please bless me. Bhagavan said, why, why shall I bless you? What do you don't have that I shall bless you? You have everything within you. Just realize it. Just discover it. We always want that someone would bless us. Why? You put your hand on your head and bless yourself. You are the creator of your universe. You are the creator of the universe. If there is any creator of this universe, it is you yourself. Don't think yourself to be weak and feeble. This is our hypnotism. Nobody has hypnotized us, but we ourselves, but with our weak and feeble thoughts, give up these thoughts, break away these thoughts, break all the shackles, break all the fetters and come out. Realize yourself that there is none to bless you. You have to bless yourself. You have to carry out your own salvation. You have to realize yourself that you are of the nature of ever divine, pure, eternal and omnipresent, omnipotent Brahman. There is no other to bless. There is no second identity. There is no second existence who will bless you. So bless yourself. That is what Vedanta says. Bless yourself. So always remember, this is, you know, these weak thoughts, we come across them. Uh, we need blessings, we need this, we need that. Vedanta says there is only one single existence. So when there is only one, who will bless whom? Try to discover it. Try to realize it. Everything is within us. Everything is within us. The entire cosmos is within us. Just realize it. I think there has been, oh, uh, Mr. Devashish Banerjee said, what is the form of that formless entity? Uh, Devashish ji, your question is, uh, contradictory in itself because that which is formless can never have a form. So the formless is formless. It doesn't have any form. But till we have our mind, we always even give a form to the formless. For example, when we meditate at times we say that, you know, meditate on the formless then we think, okay, the for, or meditate on the infinite. And if I am said so, I will suddenly think, you know, okay, I have to meditate on the infinite. So the infinite means it's like the sky. So whenever I say, or it is like the ocean, infinite ocean. So we need some help, some support. Again, it is our weak mind, weak and feeble mind, which tries to give form to the formless. The formless is formless. We gradually, when we go or elevate ourselves or develop in this path, then we come to know that 
this consciousness you know there is a very beautiful saying of swami vivekananda that in future the future people shall worship consciousness with consciousness they will not hear of buddha they will not hear of ram or krishna or jesus or muhammad or anyone else they will worship consciousness with consciousness and be free so all these forms that we have you know these are like supports okay they are good for the beginners but when we proceed when we are going in the path of advaita when we are going in the path of non dualism gradually we have to give up the form and go to the formless but it requires practice so always remember never try to give shape to the formless because you are creating an imaginary boundary you are creating an imaginary limitation for the unlimited so the formless is always formless it doesn't have a form whatsoever you might imagine the most beautiful form in the universe but still that is a form you have to go beyond it that is the beauty of advaita vedanta it says stop not till the goal is reached you have seen a beautiful form the most beautiful deity or the most beautiful form ever you can imagine but still you have not reached the goal till you have not found yourself or you till you have not identified yourself one with that supreme no form whatsoever is allowed yes if any one of you have any more thing to ask you are welcome how can i realize mr vidyajra has asked another question how can i realize it for practice for practice as i said we have discussed this in other sessions in our earlier sessions mr vidya ji that you have to hear about this again and again you have to hear about the atman or brahman again and again it has to be heard of it has to be then reflected upon and then it has to be meditated upon so this is the process atma bare srotabhya mantabhya nididhasitabhya you have to hear about the atman you have to hear about the self again and again again and again again and again then you have to as we go on hearing with apt attention but there is a process how to hear with apt attention with all my mind and all my heart and all my soul i have to hear it just like swallowing you know just like swallowing things not seeing anything else just sharp focused pin pointed to the point i have to hear it in that way with apt attention and when i hear in this way the reflection automatically goes on when the reflection goes on in the right way meditation automatically happens when meditation happens in the right way you enter into samadhi so the main thing is go to the source what with what did you begin he, listening hearing hear it in the proper way others will follow it's a pure science so hear it with apt attention this atman is to be heard of reflected upon and meditated upon and ultimately it has to be realized as one with myself this is the process of vedanta advaita vedanta devashish ji has asked another question that if brahman and this world both are false how can it be because this world is the creation of brahman brahman never creates <laughs> brahman is one mr devashish banerji devashish ji brahman is one and indivisible 
so there is no question of creation when there is one for creation you need two you need duality for creation when there is only one there is no question of any creation as we are two now we are talking though virtually but still we are talking because there are two when i will go into the depths of samadhi then i cannot talk with you because there i will realize that i am one with brahman with this entire universe as one single existence and there there is no question of any creation whatsoever so this is the bold statement and proclamation of advaita vedanta that this world we see this earth or heaven or hell or whatever we see are but our imaginations are but our hypnotism in which we have hypnotized ourselves actually there is one single existence which is known as atman there is no creation because brahman is one and indivisible so brahman does not create just remember the story of the farmer where he says that whom shall i weep for whom shall i grieve for for those seven boys of mine seven sons of mine who were beautiful handsome princes or this single son both are false both are unreal this son single son is as unreal as those seven princes that was a dream and when i was dreaming that was true this is also a dream this is true because i am dreaming and vedanta says wake up from this dream wake up you when we wake up from our dream we have the material awakening or the awakening of this world vedanta says you need another awakening and that is the transcendental awakening and then you will see that actually there is only one single existence there is no two so there is no question of any creation by any one whatsoever because when there is one there is no question of any creation i don't think that i have any more questions today so in that uh mr devashish banerji has asked about the conscious mind and the subconscious mind uh that will again uh, be a very big topic so uh today i would like to end uh, with this and uh, your question i shall surely answer you uh, what is the effect of conscious mind and subconscious mind because we see all dreams in subconscious state of mind and by the way subconscious mind has greater role than conscious mind you see this conscious what we say conscious mind is relative consciousness when you reach the ultimate consciousness then you see that there are no difference between subconscious this so called consciousness vedantic the vedantin says that this consciousness is no consciousness at all that consciousness which shows us uh, manifoldness that consciousness which creates discrimination that consciousness which creates differences cannot be consciousness in the real sense of the term so when we reach that consciousness which is the absolute consciousness then we will see that there is nothing like subconscious or this these are all terms of this world again which is just a hypnotism i have answered your question from the perspective of non dual vedanta because as today's topic is non dual vedanta or advaita vedanta with this we come to the end of today's session we'll be meeting again on 
uh, Thursday on YouTube live session in Bengali. Till then, Namaskar.